Well, hello and welcome. It's been a while since we started at this angle and some of you may not at all be familiar with it, but a couple of you actually asked me to bring back outfit of the day and I used to do outfit of the day every now and then, especially when I was going through my uh, patch ranking series and we were just counting down palettes and I kind of stopped because I don't really consider myself much of a fashionista nor, nor do I think there's anything super special about my clothing style, but hey, I figured I would oblige and today is a day as good as any <laughs> to start that. So what am I wearing? today. So for starters I am going to be wearing these um, beige pants with like a very wide cut here which are called the dad pants as in daddy pants, dad pants from Bershka and trust me I'm as shocked as you are that I have clothing from Bershka. The last few times I've been at Bershka I just swiftly left because the average age of the customers there was about 15 and I didn't really fit in but these are gorgeous they have like a uh, they go very well around the waist they, they're actually made of like a really good quality fabric for Bershka standards then I'm going to put on this very bright happy yellow shirt because I'm trying to conjure the sun and the summer back into the Netherlands unsuccessfully so far. Uh, this is a bit of a plain t-shirt that I wouldn't usually wear for work. I would usually wear a t-shirt like this at home but today I'm going to spruce it up with this white blazer from Mango and I think that's really going to bring it home. And of course we have an extensive array of beautiful Ana Luisa jewelry that I'm going to choose from. Now the only thing that I haven't really chosen still are the earrings. I've already decided on the rings. I'm going to do these three rings. I really love all three of them. They're like just really cool interesting shapes. Anyway, but earrings. We have to choose earrings. So I love these and I think they would look beautiful with yellow. Like the combination of like white, yellow, beige and blue would look absolutely stunning. However, we are duping sunlit seduction today and that's going to be a lot of like rosy tones so I'm actually thinking I'm not going to do these because they just will not fit the rest of the colors that are going to go on my face unfortunately. I will leave this combination of clothes and these earrings to another day. So what are our other choices? Now these are such a cool shape. Can you see they just kind of like go through your ear. I think they are going to make a perfect like accent earring on my second piercing and I actu actually think I'm going to just wear these today because they are so cute. They make a little bit of noise when you wear them. Yes, I know I'm such a child uh, and I really like them actually. I have been surprised at how elegant uh, they look even though I kind of associate them with like childish style. I don't know for what reason they remind me of childish earrings but I've actually really been loving them. I'll show you in a little bit because I think I'm going to use these and then use one of these as my accent earring and of course my beloved ear cuff that you see in pretty much every video. And you can tell I haven't done outfit of the day in so long that I had already forgotten that I usually show you also my scent of the day and my watch of the day because as you can see I really like to match my the color of the wristbands to whatever clothing I have. I don't have all the colors out there but I happen to have a very fun yellow so I think that's going to fit perfectly with my shirt and for scent of the day we are doing bitter peach from Tom Ford because I want to smell like summer. So here you have the outfit. I kind of remember why I stopped doing outfit of the day because I have a pretty terrible setup for you know showing outfits here but here are the pants. I really love them they're like so comfy. The only thing I need to be careful with is like high-waisted pants tend to give me horrible stomach aches sometimes. But I love how the t-shirt goes with the blazer. The blazer was actually a present, well not a present, a friend of mine wasn't going to use it anymore and she gave it to me. Let me show you also the earrings up close and personal. So here are the earrings that I chose to wear today. I think they're really cute yet really elegant. And what's really cool about them is that if you wanted to make them like very basic, you could just remove the little ring and just have like a straight up you know, metal hoop. So if you wanted to go for something classic, elegant, everyone will take you seriously, you can definitely just wear the little hoop or if you wanted to make them a little more playful, you can add back the little ring and it will make a little noise when you walk around. I love that. And like I said, here is the other earring, the one that doesn't really have any sort of closure, it just like kind of goes through your ear and I like to wear that one as an accent in my second piercing. Anyway, 
Today's pet pairing video is going to be a special edition one because we're going to dupe, not dupe the vibes, straight up st try to dupe the um, new Molly Seduction palette from Pat McGrath Labs. I've made my feelings on this palette clear on quite a few occasions, so I will maybe link uh, the videos that I talked about Sunlit Seduction here up in the cards for you. However, there's been a new development, Alicia, Alicia Archer from uh, Kinky Sweat. I keep calling her Kinky Sweat because that used to be the name of her channel. Uh, anyway, she posted her video. Thank goodness she was the first one to post a video with this palette because I always look up to her reviews specifically when I want to, you know, get excited for a new mothership. Usually at the time she posts a video I have already ordered mine and I'm already all hyped up and I just watch her video to get even more hyped up. Now, like I said, I did not order Sunlit Seduction, I did not order it with the 30% of glitches, I didn't order it on release day. Um, and unfortunately Alicia's video did the opposite of hyping me up. Um, I found the palette for the first time ever more underwhelming in real life than in the promo photos. Usually when I see the promo photos I'm like this looks pretty but you know I know that when I hold it in my hands in real life it's going to be spectacular and usually when Alicia shows the palette I already get super hyped up not this time. For starters in the promo photos it seemed like a couple of the mats in this palette would be browns. Don't be fooled there are no browns. There is another vermilion you know maroony purpley kind of color and two pinks. And the rest of the shades are also shades that I could easily dupe with other palettes, which is usually not a problem for me. Like the fact that I can dupe uh, or like uh, have similar shades in my collection has never bothered me before with the Mothership because I think it's also um, nice to have the color story together as one and not have to dig into 50 palettes to recreate the Mothership. But what I find more interesting is that for someone who goes into such extreme detail uh, into, you know, makeup she completely omitted the fact that the special shades are no longer baked. I wouldn't imagine that she doesn't notice or she doesn't care because she's so nerdy about makeup. Uh, I don't know if it's because deep down she doesn't want to say it because it will make the brand look even worse. I have no idea, but for some reason and to my disappointment she just straight up doesn't tell people that these shades are not the same as in other palettes. So there's a huge difference in the formula and people should be warned about that. Um, the four special shades, she did not seem impressed at all. She didn't think that they were like the usual topper quality that Pat McGrath's, you know, special four shade corner has. And they seemed more like duochrome metallics, like glorified duochrome metallics. They didn't really even seem to have the same capabilities as the topper shades in Moonlit Seduction, which were also not baked. But at least to some extent they could serve the same purpose as the baked shades. Now we're going to go uh, shade by shade and I'm going to open here for myself Alicia's video and we're going to go shade by shade and I will try to dupe each individual shade uh, with the closest thing I have from my collection and then we're going to do a little look centered around uh, the theme of Sunlit Seduction. So Alicia started with the uh, classic Skin Show shade and she said that the Skin Show shade is kind of like a champagne with a little bit of like a coral flip to it. So I immediately thought of Utopian Dream. So we're going to use the Skin Show shade from Utopian Dream to dupe the shade from Sunlit Seduction. I don't know that this is the exact same duochrome, but honestly with the Skin Show shades, if you got one, you kind of have most of them. There are subtle differences, don't get me wrong, and I'm very nerdy about the subtle differences, but I feel like you don't have to have the exact same shade of the Skin Show as in the new palette. So here you have the Skin Show shade from Utopian Dream, which in my opinion has a little bit of like that peachy flip to it. Next up we've got the deep matte shade, which is like a deep uh, plummy shade. When she was applying that shade, it actually revealed to have quite some like deeper browny almost red tones and I immediately thought of one of my favorite matte shades from Pat McGrath Labs which is this one here from the Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. I think this has a similar vibe, maybe it's a little bit more red brick leaning rather than purple maroon leaning but I think it will do. And honestly, if you wanted to have a slightly more maroon version of this shade, just take your Moonlit Seduction palette. This is less deep than the shade that is present in Sunlit Seduction, but I think if you really wanted to just have the 
option for something that is a bit more, you know, maroonish, then you can take this one. So, you've got two options when it comes to the deeper matte shade, depending on which um, side of the colors you really want to lean into. Okay, then we have a rose matte shade, and I think this one is actually prettier than the one in the new palette. I think the one in the new palette is even more pink um, than I was hoping for it to be. So, why am I grabbing this palette. However, there is a really beautiful pink shade in Utopian Dream, which I actually really like because it is a bit more neutral, a bit more muted, and I think it will basically serve a very similar purpose to what this new pink shade will do, but just be a slightly less offensively pink. And don't worry, I got options for you. If you wanted to go for a matte that truly is more purple, sorry pink then you could take the matte from the eternal eden quad which is also like a warmer leaning pink but it is indeed much more pink than the one from utopian dream the one from utopian dream is gorgeous because it has these beautiful like muted mauvey tones to it the next shade is a copper metallic and i immediately thought that it reminded me a lot of the new shade that is present in passion fluor Honestly, when it comes to bronze coppery metallics, there are plenty of options from Pat McGrath's range, but this is the one that, upon seeing the swatch, I immediately thought of. So there you have it. It is a coppery, orangey shade with a little bit of a pink sparkle to it. And if you want it to lean in more into the orange but with a little bit of a pink duochrome to it, you could also still go into your uh, Hitopian Dream palette and take this shade which is really, really gorgeous, but I think it is a little bit more pink than it really is an orangey copper. That's why I think the one from Passion Fleur is more similar to the one in Sunlit. But if you want it to lean in more on like the pink sparkle, then this one is gorgeous. It's more dimensional than this one. Next, she mentions a shade that she gets really excited about, which is like a rosy, bronzy, browny kind of shade. And I immediately thought of my favorite shade from the nude Lior Quint, which is this one over here, which is really, really gorgeous. And it is in the beautiful formula that comes in the Quint. Honestly, I think they look very similar to each other. And this shade is just glorious. So this also is like a bronzy shade, but it has rosiness to it. So based off of the swatch and the description that Alicia is giving, I am pretty sure this shade will be similar to the one in Sunlit. Next we have the Soft Warm Terracotta Matte, and I immediately thought, well, we've already got one. It's like right here in Mulded Seduction. This is a warm, rosy terracotta matte, if I've ever seen one. So there you have it. I think the mattes were quite easy to dupe and that's not surprising because that's one of the biggest issues I think with Pat McGrath's Mothership palettes uh, the past five years or so she just keeps giving us the same mattes which is why it seems like all the palettes are the same because you feel so limited by the mattes so here you get you have pretty much the description of the sh new shade in Sunlit Seduction but like you've already got it in Moonlit Seduction okay then she starts with the um, corner of the special shades and the first one she swatches is a Astral Pink Fetish, which immediately made us, I think all of us, <laughs> think of the Astral shade that we got in Ritualistic Rose. And I think this shade already holds the advantage that it is in the beautiful, dimensional, yet lightweight baked formula. So instead of having like a super chunky, flaky shade that has a lot of base color to it and you can't use in such a versatile manner, you can just dip into your ritualistic rose quad and have this beautiful astral shade in a better formula. Yes, because this is in her baked formula, the base color is much more subtle, so it will not be as uh, intense of a pink to gold duochrome, but depending on your preference, my preference would be for something like the baked shade, because I use the corner of the special shades as like my transformative shades. I like to play around with them uh, and then depending on how I, how I want to use them I put them over a glitter glue to intensify the base or over another shade to intensify the base but I want to have the option to use them very sheerly just as like a layer of glimmer on the eyes and this new shade I don't think really gives you that option. 
Next she swatches Astral Amethyst Allure, which seems to be like a purpley, mauve dimensional, shimmery kind of shade. And I went back into the Ritualistic Rose, because I think this pretty much comes very close, but again is in the Superior Baked Formula. And there you have it. The next shade, the Crimson shade, is the only one that I cannot like straight up do for you, but it is essentially um, a very intense red shade, which leans, seems to lean a little bit more into the purple side from what I can see here. It's uh, something with crimson in the name. So um, the shade that I'm going to show you will not be a straight up dupe, but I, I personally prefer it and I will tell you why. So I think that if you have Blitz Flame from the Bronze Seduction palette, uh, you already have the red shade of your dreams because this is gorgeous. This is in the Smooth Blitz uh, formula and it is a beautiful true red. Yes, the undertone of the shade in the new palette is going to be slightly different, but if you wanted to have a red shade in the baked formula, I don't know why anyone else would need anything but fl Blitz Flame in their lives. I am literally set with red eyeshadow because I have Blitz Flame. I don't need another red. This is the most perfect red that has ever been made because it is a true red and it is in the beautiful, elegant baked formula. And also from what I understand, the crimson shade from Sunlit Seduction is kind of the problem child of that palette. It is so incredibly dense and creamy packed in the pan that there are issues with translating that shade onto your lips. From what I saw from the swatch, I don't think I have like a straight up uh, shade that is exactly the same, but uh, let's say that we're going to take this shade here, the Astro shade from the Divine Rose 2 palette, as our substitute for the last shade in the Sunlit Seduction palette. I don't know the names of any of these and I will not bother looking them up or remembering them because most of you who will watch this video are already quite familiar with Pat's palettes. So if I show you the eyeshadow, you will immediately know what I'm talking about. But I think with this shade, we have pretty much duped for the most part the new Sunlit Seduction palette. And... And I think this is uh, great to see all these colors next to each other, especially for me, because these are not colors that I get super excited by, especially when I see all of them together like this, and I think still, oh my gosh, that is just so overwhelmingly pink. Um, for me, the fact that there is not a single like true brown matte in this palette is already such a huge like no-no because I am just fucking done with the pink rosy mattes. I don't have any use for them. Um, and then the rest of the shades are also quite in the rosy family. Honestly, the more I see this palette, the more I think about it, the more I don't want it even on sale. This video is going to be like 150 years long, so I'm going to try to be very efficient here with the rest of the makeup. I'm going to take the Inglot eyeshadow primer. I haven't actually decided exactly what I'm going to do on my eyes. And if I'm being honest with you, seeing all these colors together didn't really inspire me and get me all giddy about creating a look surrounding the color theme of this palette. What did you guys think of Alicia's video? Again, I don't want to be, you know, a bummer for everyone who is excited about this palette on, and who may actually quite enjoy all the formulas that are present in there. But, you know, you're on my channel dealing with my expectations taking Auric Glow Lust, and my expectations have been anything but met. So if you are pumped out by my reaction to this palette, then you can just click away. But if you are like me, and you were even more disappointed by um, this palette after seeing Alicia's video, then uh, let's collectively give each other a hug and play around with our older mothership so that we can get our kick taking the Dior Backstage Foundation as usual. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it on my cute little Koyudo Fupa brush, which I haven't really used in a while. I'd kind of forgotten about it. It's a different size compared to a bunch of my other brushes, so it doesn't really stick out, and I often forget that I have it. But I really enjoy this brush for foundation because it really works it into the skin really nicely. And I always really enjoy how my foundation looks when I've used this brush. But it calls for a completely different kind of motion. It's not this motion, but it's more of like this swiping motion if you want to apply your foundation with it. I'm going to quickly set with the corresponding powder. 
Dior Skin Correcting One and as usual for concealer. I usually apply my concealer before my powder, but I sort of forgot, so today we're reversing the order. I'm going to speed through my brows, I'm just going to do my Too Faced uh, Laminating Brow Wax. I'm going to take Desert Glow to bronze up the skin a little bit. I'm going through like a variety of different looks in my mind and I'll be honest with you, I'm leaning a little bit into like a more orangey look than I'm leaning into a pink look. I just really don't feel like doing something that's too pink. So we might, we are definitely going to dip into the Astral from Ritualistic Rose, the pink gold flip, because I think that's one of the, you know, um, most iconic shades from Pat's Blitz Astral Quads. And I think it would be a shame not to use it to Duke Sunlit Seduction, just so we are reminded how glorious that eyeshadow is. Overall, I feel pretty flipping uninspired <laughs> by this color story. I am going to take my little uh, wheel here from the uh, Bridgerton collection, the, the what is this called? The Blushing Delight. <laughs> and I'm going to take this pink shade here as my blush to at least have something pink going on on the skin. I think this formula is amazing. I really love this specific tone of pink because it is a bit of a warmer pink. One of you mentioned in one of my videos that you were having a really hard time picking a product from here and it was very sheer on you. I believe you might have a hard pan on your blush because I have to actually be extremely careful when I blush, uh, apply when I apply any of the blushes in here because they are so incredibly pigmented and I always end up with bozo cheeks. So I'm assuming you're having an issue with hard pan here. I do have an issue with the highlighter. For me, for example, the highlighter, I can barely get anything out of it. So I know what you're talking about because I think what's happening with me with this highlighter is what you're experiencing with the blush. I think the Divine Rose highlighter is the absolute perfect shade of highlighter to complement the Sunlit Seduction palette. Okay, I've zoomed you in a little bit and I have a bit of an idea what I want to do with the look. I'm going to take the matte shade from Voristic Vixen to serve as my like crease and outer corner shade because this is a very versatile shade. You can uh, really blend it out or you can really deepen uh, up by uh, packing on the color. Then I'm going to take my beautiful Nude Allure Quint and I want to use this shade, which to me is also one of the stands out, stand outs in the new palette, this like bronzy, rosy, uh, browny shade on like the outer portion of my lid. And then on the inner portion of my lid, actually thinking of like an uh, orangey coppery shade, we could easily also go for just the one that's present in Nude Allure. But because I think the shade in Sunlit looks more like the one from Passion Fleur, I'm going to take the shade from Passion Fleur on the inner portion of my lids uh, and then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the Astral from uh, Ritualistic Rose like over top of my lids to give that like glimmer and do a chromey effect. I'm going to start off with the deep shade, the deep matte shade in Voristic Vixen, which like I said, not a straight up dupe for the one in the new palette, but I like the tone of this one better. And when Alicia was applying it, it seemed like the new shade blended out and on the lid translates a little bit more like this shade than a true like maroon purple. At least from her video, that's the impression that I got. What I like about this shade is that it has a little bit of those like browny, ready terracotta tones to it. But it is still very muted. I really like this shade. I'm going to slightly deepen out the outer corners by just packing lightly this shade here in the outer corners and not blending it out too much. I'm going to take the Intensifies stick from Pat McGrath. Since we're doing Pat, let's also do the Intensifies stick and I'm going to just take it like this on my finger and I'm going to apply it all over the um, like empty portion of my lid where I want all the metallic shades to go. 
Pet has of course also released a new eye primer and I am intrigued by the primer. I think if I pan my Inglot one I might pick up eventually the eye primer from Pet to try, but it's not something that I'm in a rush to try ASAP. Okay, then I'm going to take a little flat shader brush. First I'm going to go into New Delure and take this beautiful bronzy rosy brown shade to apply on the outer portions of my lids. This shade truly is phenomenal. And yesterday I watched a video from Claudia where she pointed out that these shades also do not have metal pans. Can you see that? I never realized that at least visibly these eyeshadows seem to be pressed into a pan here, but not really into a metal pan, which is interesting. That makes these queens even more alluring to me. Now I'm going to take the Passion Fleur Quad and I'm going to go into this orangey coppery shade and I'm going to apply that on the like inner half of the lid, right here. I'm going to quickly do the Skin Show shade that I mentioned from the um, Utopian Dream palette in my inner corners, just so we stick with the shades that we picked and not <laughs> random Skin Show shades. So I'm going to apply this one here in the inner corners. And last but not least, or at least for my upper lid, like I said, I'm going to go into the beautiful Ritualistic Rose Quad. And I'm going to take this astral shade, which is called Astral Rose Orchid. And I'm going to press Astral Rose Orchid basically a little bit over top of everything that's going on on my lids. Because I want that intense sparkly and duochrominess. So that we get a very similar vibe from this look and feel satisfied that we have successfully duped uh, Sunlit Seduction. I actually really like how this looks together with the topper over top of that. Gorgeous. Oh, well, looking at the matte shade from Passion Fleur, actually I think this deep matte might also serve as a dupe for one of the mattes in the new palette. Yeah, really, you open any Pat McGrath palette from the last five years and you will definitely have a deep, like, plummy purple. Any of the Bridgerton palettes, really. A lot of things. Okay, for my lower lash line, I'm just going to take this shade that I used from the Boris the Vixen Quad, the matte shade, and run that here on my lower lashes, and that will pretty much complete this sunlit seduction inspired slash duping situation kind of look. I'm actually pretty happy with how the final look turned out. I talked for so long that my mouth is super dry and I couldn't do anything but like a really, really creamy hydrating formula. So I have the Divinyl in Flesh 7 from Pat McGrath on my lips. Obviously, that was a whole lot of different palettes to just dupe the one palette. If you really love the color story of Sunlit Seduction, you know, the convenience of having all these colors together is obviously a priority for you. So I would definitely say go ahead and get Sunlit Seduction. But if you have all of these other Pat McGrath palettes, Sunlit Seduction wasn't really your vibe and you were looking for something similar, then yes, spread around your collection, you have plenty of similar shades. And if I, have to, if I had to narrow it down, and now that I swatched out all the shades together and I had a better look at the color story together, if you asked me to narrow it down to maybe one or two palettes that give you extremely similar vibes to the new Sunlit Seduction, in terms of a mothership, I would definitely have to go with Utopian Dream. I think Utopian Dream by far dupes the shades that are present in Sunlit the best because you've got the pink shade, like the matte pink shade, you do have a deeper um, chocolatey brown shade to uh, spruce things up a little bit with. You have this beautiful flaky shade, the Astral here, that um, does give like sort of similar vibes to the gold um, pink flip a shade that is present in Sunlit Seduction. You have this beautiful like chocolatey browny shade which also has these rosy tones to it. You have this one here which we also swatched, swatched earlier which is also a bit of like a copper with a pink sparkle to it. Uh, then the Skin Show shade which seems to be the closest. Honestly, I think this provides you with the most colors that truly are similar 
to the sunlit seduction palette and in a better formula and obviously the ritualistic rose quote if you have that in your collection then you already basically have two of the new topper shades like two of the new astro shades that are present in sunlit but personally in my opinion in a far superior formula i hope that this video was interesting and useful to you please do let me know in the comment section what do you think about uh, duping the palette what do you think about the look i'm just like super curious to hear your thoughts also what did you think of alicia's video uh, did you also get the impression that she wasn't super vibing with the palette but because she loves pets so much she was really trying to remain positive Anyway, I'm going to close this video off. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa's jewelry. I will have a link to their website as well as a code that they gave me for 20% off for you in case you're interested in their jewelry. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!